Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us here on the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. My name is Louisa Havers and I help high achievers, entrepreneurs and coaches lift the lid on life and business so that they can live at their highest value. Each episode, we will bring you our favorite founders, CEOs, and guest experts to share with you their insights and strategies to expand your wealth consciousness, your spiritual leadership, and aligned business strategies. We know that living in alignment with your soul's mission is what fulfills you, and we are here to show you how to achieve this in an energetically aligned way. If you haven't already, be sure to claim your free abundance activation in the Akashic Records. Go to louisahavers.com forward slash gift to unlock your abundance activation today. And if you'd like my support in having aligned success in life and business, then contact me at www.louisahavers.com and let's explore together if it's an aligned match. Get ready to live at your highest value and to expand into your next level of money as you elevate and receive more you create more for others. Righty ho, let's dive into today's episode. Welcome everybody. Welcome back to the Infinite Prosperity podcast. This week, I am so excited to have Cordelia Henry with me. Now, by way of introduction, I'm going to share Cordelia's bio with you and you'll see why I'm so excited that Cordelia is here. Cordelia is a tribe builder and founder of Palescence. Palescence is devoted to teaching ambitious women how to be more successful by using their natural relationship skills to build authentic tribes of influencers by leveraging their connections. She's created the Build Your Influence Tribe six-month mentorship program, the proven step-by-step process that shows women exactly how to build their tribe of influencers in record time, yes please, and through her workshops, courses, speeches and programs. She shows you how to create a spectacular abundant life you love by building relationships with the right people. So good. And for those sisterpreneurs who wish to build and manage their heart-centered businesses by establishing alliances, she's created a six-week program so you can discover how to truly collaborate with other business owners. And Cordelia hosts a weekly talk show. So this is how I got to know Cordelia called Beyond Influence in her online community called Sisterhood for Influence Impact. And she uses the platform to invite female entrepreneurs from all around the world to share their experiences, to collaborate, to embrace the unique approach that she's learned over her 35 plus years of increasing business profits and enhancing professional relationships that produce dramatic results. It is all about relationships. And Cordelia is living with her gorgeous husband and family in the beautiful Dubai. And she enjoys a close relationship with God, eating healthy food, except for the occasional bouts of chocolate. I love that. (laughs) Reading amazing books, traveling the world and walking on the beach and exercising like it's gone out of fashion. I absolutely love that. A huge welcome, Cordelia. Thank you so much, Louisa. I am delighted to be back in my home country. Lovely, wet, sunny, dry, maybe cold, windy. We don't know England. So I'm glad that I'm (laughs) hanging out here in Dubai, which is pretty hot because we're in like a sandpit here. Um, But nice to be on the show. Thank you for inviting me, Louisa. Oh, thank you so much for being here. And I'm so excited about our topic today because it it feels so aligned that we should be talking about, you know, our theme, who do successful women hang out with? Because building relationships is something that you really are uh, a bit of a, a guru at. And I love the, the way that you approach it and the energy behind it. Um, so let's start at the beginning, because I know that you're totally passionate about your business and your community. How did it how did it all start? So I was having this conversation with God and really kind of beating him up. What's going wrong in my business? Why am I not being successful? You told me I had this amazing gift. I can't see it. And the response was. Silence. Hmm, okay so I started beating him up again I was like come on answer me you're meant to be God you're meant to tell me give me direction what's wrong with you are you and Jesus snoozing up there so anyway I went on the walk my favorite place in the world is the beach Hmm. and I had another chat this time I was a little bit more uh, polite and I was just saying you know what speak to me tell me what you want me to do with this gifting because I know I have a natural gift to connect with people but not only to do that but to build community and fellowship and I tell you I have this gift because Louisa when I was three years old I was on a bus in the UK with my mummy and coming from a very large family um, that were pastoral my parents had two jobs each the church 
and their normal jobs so that they could put food on the table. And I was on this bus with my mummy and um, didn't have my sisters with me, had her undivided attention, although we were shopping. So she was multitasking and ran away from her to the front of the bus. In the 60s, it was freezing cold because the, they never had doors on those red buses. Do you remember? I do. And she was there holding on to her bags and looking um, down at me, you know, because my fingers were kind of glassed to hers. And then I decided I would just slip away and run to the front of the bus where the heater was, you know, at the, on the floor. Yeah. Take my coat in the middle of winter. All of the passengers were saying, oh, my goodness, who does this child belong to? Should we report the, her to the authorities? You know, they, you could see all the Brits were on the yeah. inquisitive mode. Mum was glaring at me as if to say, come back, little brat. <laughs> I ignored her as I do. I mean, I ignore most people and proceeded to tell them who I was, what my name um was where we live, the name of um, my mum and my dad, my sisters, what was in the shopping bags, they loved it. Because if we've realised anything about COVID, it's helped us to understand we need human connection. Mm. So what happened in that moment, Louisa, was that they connected to each other about me. I then felt very loved because, oh, at last, I was seen, I was heard, I was loved, right? got sweet and pocket money as well. Um, but more importantly, I created this energy, this atmosphere in that bus. And my mom looked at me, the glare had gone and the smile was replaced with that knowing smile of, oh, right. So this is the gifting that this child has. So I was on the beach and I was talking to God about this gift that I'd been given as a kid and had used it throughout my childhood, adulthood, um, and wasn't sure where he wanted me to use it. Mm. And then he said to me, community. And I was like, mm, don't understand. And then I realized that from birth, actually before birth, I had been observing my parents build community around a topic that they loved, God. Yeah. So for the last um, 55 years, I've basically been building community, watching two people that are passionate, that do it very well, to building it myself. And that was how Per Lessons started just trying to help women to build a community around their brand. Because if you believe in word and mouth marketing, that is the way you have to start building a community around your brand. And that's, that's tribe building. And that's why I love it. And it's just me. I just, it just oozes out of me. Yeah. It's just I, I, and it's why, um, you know, I resonated with you so much because it's um, certainly how I've been building my business as well is, you know, be being able to, I, I call it, the way I've described it to my clients is it's like taking offline networking where you're building real, real relationships, you're going and having, you know, one-to-one um, -one coffees with people, getting to know each other, et cetera, but you're taking that principle and bringing it into the on online world. So it's around having authority you know, good quality relationships where you really know and understand each other rather than being like loads and loads of numbers of people that you actually got no clue who they who they are. And you don't need them. You need to be really the money, the success, the pleasure, the joy is in the niche. It really is. And Absolutely. the only way to be niche is to build the relationship so that you truly understand each other and connect. And it may well be that today Louisa and I may not connect. But if we know each other and we build a friendship, later on, there'll be a connection about our business. It's guaranteed because I'll be thinking of her, she'll be thinking of me, but it doesn't, I don't have to launch in and say, what can you do for me, Louisa? And vice versa. All I'm, all I'm really wanting to do is just connect with you. Yeah. At a friendship level, at a relationship level, focused, but not grabby grabby yeah do you know what <clears throat> I love that because that's exactly what I think as well and what um, I call it leading with go-giver energy and leading from your heart and knowing that one of the things that I do in my um, community I've got a Facebook community is where we have a networking post each Friday and I'll look each week to see who's looking to connect with who and if I know somebody that their name pops into my head because I know I know my members of my community I'll be oh so and so you need to you know you guys need to hook up or I might not know why they, they need to hook up I just know I'm getting a, a download that they need to yeah. be connected and so I'll, I'll, I'll do that because that's the gift that we're able to do when we know you know what our clients are about what our broader community members are about as well and I know that you lead with that go-giver energy as well and, and and leading from the heart tell us a little bit more about how you like to to, to do that that's okay, so how do I lead 
with this go-getter heart. Um, well, in June of last year, when the pandemic was just at its worst, I was lonely and I just felt the need to have my girls around me. And I used to do very um, successful live events and I would do them as a community builder and it kept me in company. I'd interview lots of women and just have a, have a blast. It was great with dance sometimes, network, connect, interview different women. And so I thought, let me put this online. I was a little bit scared of the technology because I am a 1960s kid. So I was like, oh, I'm not sure if I can figure out how to do this. But yes, YouTube was my savior. And uh, <laughs> so I figured it out and started my group. And it's called Sisterhood for Influence and Impact. And in that group, I said, anyone that wants to join needs to be referred. So it's a very... Um, focus group mm. and it's all f about women who believe in the power of authentic connection and they believe in collaboration and I invite women from all around the world who have been recommended to me to come into that group and then from there I have a look at what they're doing and I cherry pick those such as you Louisa and invite you to be on my talk show so that talk show again is an opportunity to really spotlight women that are really doing good in the world I do it on a complimentary basis why because I believe if I can help you shine and not want anything back from you and I keep doing that then what happens is you will want to help me shine in return but if in case that can't happen for us there'll be someone else that helps me shine and that philosophy is so so deep it's a biblical principle it's based on the principle that you keep sowing into life of someone and you reap more than you actually sow so that's how i do it and i just love the benefits of also being able to um, launch programs that show women how to do that themselves and a lot of women come to me because they're not having a consistent stream of new leads mm -hmm. and they've done all of the posts and all of the social media and all of the click funnels and all of the uh, master classes and they're just not getting a steady stream so what I do is I basically say to them well look have a look at your contacts how many people do you know already and when we go into the amount of people we know and I show them my system that turns the people that they know into their strategic partners. They're like, oh my gosh, how much money have I left on the table? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, your money, your success, your joy is with the people that you already know. You just need a system to be able to convert them into either strategic partners, collaboration partners, affiliate partners, profitability partners. There's all different types of roles that they could play and they'd love to help you because they're they're sitting on your platforms they know you they trust you otherwise they would have left you right yeah exactly and if you do that with a heart-centered conversation and I have a system for that as well because many people say I don't know how to approach them I feel a bit weird but mm. well, there's a system for that as well my darling so I go through all of the steps that you can take to build those conversations so that they don't become just a cup of tea or a glass of wine or a cocktail or two, but it's very <laughs> focused and it's, and it's conversation that's in the female energy. Yes. But what we like to do is gather. Mm -hmm. We like to build connection. Men, they're hunters and they want to go in for the kill. And if we use our conversations in the feminine way, we'll get a lot more out of it. So I hope that answers your question. It was a long answer. <laughs> no, it completely does. And I, it totally resonates. And uh, one of the things that I, I, I couldn't agree more with is in terms of knowing who's immediately in your, in your network. Um, and whether, you know, we're, you know, we're both coaches that as clients come into our communities as well is who they then meet. I love it. I see my clients working with each other which is just so exciting, you know? Well, I was, yeah, I was just so happy when I saw Tina and Rhea on your podcast. I was like, go girl! <laughs> <laughs> because they have been in my community and obviously, you know, you girls, I encourage you to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with each other. And I just thought that was so lovely just to be able to connect you with, you know, California and St. Yeah. Kitts and Nevis, right? All yeah. the way from sunny Luz in Brighton. <laughs> 
good old Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And I think it's just, it is the way to go. And recognizing, I think, because one of the questions that I get to ask, and it'd be interesting to know if, you know, if this is a common question from your perspective as well, is and this may be more when people are first start, starting out in their businesses rather than seasoned entrepreneurs like like ourselves is feeling like well if I'm giving over being able to give without attachment and truly being able to do it from the heart so you, because it is the law of re- reciprocity you will receive and the beauty is it doesn't have to be back from that person exactly it's the energy that you're giving out so you can give freely without attachment just knowing you will receive the so-so reap which I just yeah. love because it just takes that pressure off of yeah. any sort of expectation you can literally just give from your heart yeah and, and it's, it's freeing, it's way. liberating. Mm. Yeah, it's liberating. And to be honest with you, I believe that when you um, have this mindset of the so so reap, then all of your fears of not feeling enough will be dissolved because we've all mm. got some elements of ourselves that we think you don't want to show you don't want to reveal right but when you sew into someone and you see that just by sewing into them that they you brought them joy it it empowers you that's what true empowerment means you know what I mean so if you're not feeling enough or good enough or clear enough or strong enough or just not enough that day by just sewing into someone else and just seeing that joy it has a ripple effect back to you (laughs) It really does. Yeah, I love it. Uh, it's a, a beautiful way to, to 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 lead and grow your grow your business. What do you think then are some of the what's the most common myth that you are busting in in the industry? <laughs> that it's not bad to speak to strangers. I oh, truly yes. believe that your next client is one conversation away. And you've really got to stamp on what mummy taught you, which is strangers are bad. Yeah. Do you remember we taught yes. that to our kids? <laughs> yes. You don't talk to strangers. It's dangerous. To strangers. Dangerous. Yes. But here's the thing. When you are able to connect with a variety of different people, you expand your network. When you expand your network, you're then giving yourself an opportunity to meet new people and get access to their networks. If you stay within your own network, within your own silo, within your own group, then you're limited as to the number of new people that you will meet. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go out there and you post like crazy and jump into everyone's groups. But what I am suggesting is that you follow a system, which I'm happy to share with you, um, that enables you to identify the right people that you should be spending your time with. Because you do need to have a little bit of a detox going on with contacts that no longer serve you. I couldn't agree. But, yeah. You know, as I, as I basically said before, strangers are the, um, the, the, the funnel that can open up your world, give you a better perspective and can radically change your numbers in terms of revenue. Oh, big, yeah, big time. I love what you're saying there. That as you were talking, I was thinking, yeah, if I look back over my five or six years <laughs> in the online space, thinking about who I now know is so different to when I first got started. If, you know, the my community has grown, my network has grown, and that's because I have, I didn't do what mummy said, <laughs> and I talked to strangers. <laughs> and I love it, you know, I do absolutely love it. It's, it's just wonderful. Of course, some people you connect with more than others, um, and, and that's that's kind of mirrors really what happens in life anyway, in terms of in the off, offline world, in the real in the real world. <laughs> and then it's just, um, you know, reflected in virtual reality. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, you know, there's different types of people. So as an extrovert, we struggle with knowing who to speak to because we want to speak to everybody. And we don't necessarily need to speak to everyone because that's not an effective use of our time. Mm. As an introvert, we are scared stiff of our own shadow and we just feel like we're imposing and encroaching on people if we even, you know, don't know them and want to even speak to them. Both of, both of these types of behavioral styles can benefit from connecting to strangers in the right way. All you need to do is just follow a system. And that is a proven system that I have developed over the last 35 years. And I'm glad that it's something that's been proven because if not, I think my daughter would have sent me off to a mental home. When she was younger, she always would look at me. I'd go into lifts and I'd start speaking to people. I'd be in the the, the queue 
you know, in the petrol station, I'd speak to people, supermarket, I'd speak to people and she'd be like, mom, do you really have to speak to everybody? And I'd be like, yeah, why not? And it's that, it's, it's that humble beginning that helped me to build my system, which I now use in business and teach to other women. Oh, I absolutely love it. Uh, we are kindred spirits because as you, um, I've got, I would say, about four really good close friends that I met on a tra- on trains, two from trains and two from um, sitting next door to each other on an aeroplane. And uh, it always, it always when people say, oh, how do you know each other? Oh, we met on a plane. People go, what? And I'm like, speak to the people next door to you. You never know who you're going to connect, who you're going to meet. And the, the beauty of the relationship that's going to evolve <laughs> from that. That could be our, our invitation for anybody when you're, tra- the next time you're traveling is to speak to somebody on a, on a train, on a plane, <laughs> wherever it is that you're traveling and just see what blossoms. Well, in one of my programs, I actually give you some tools as to how to identify how to approach different people. So there's four different behavioral styles, a go-getter, a promoter, a nurturer, and an examiner. Each of these different types of people will want to be approached in a different way. A go-getter, no nonsense. They wear red, they wear black. They have to be in charge of the conversation. Short sentences, to the point. The promoter, all smiles, life and soul of the party, have high energy with them, be happy and smile. The nurturer, they listen. Their voice is a lot lower, they're slower. The examiner, they're analyzing you. They are the accountants. They are stepping back from you. They will not engage unless they are ready to do so. Mm -hmm. So when you are at the airport, at the train station, in the supermarket, watch out for these type of people because it's amazing you will be having so much fun when you approach them and you practice how you can approach them because they each have a different way of connecting with you so that's something that we teach when we we do our longer programs our six month program yeah planes and trains they're my places (laughs) (laughs) I love it and I love that wisdom share around the different personality types and and being able to how to approach people in that way because I think it um that's part of the thing is it's people having the confidence of knowing how to to not feel like they're going to get rejected. I think that's such a big fear, isn't it, of any trauma that we may have had as children going up and asking our friend, you know, can we come to your party? And, you know, they've said no, or whatever. Everyone's got a version of that where somehow we've been left out. That can kind of come into play again, can't it, as adults, as we're going out there networking. The amount of people that I speak to that say, I hate networking. I'm like, I love it, you know. I love it. And I know exactly what type I am from, you know, those descriptions in terms of what you said, because I know how I'll approach, I'll approach a group of people as well in terms of like I watch, because I've got aspects of all those, those types within me, but I will watch, I'm a nurturer (laughs) completely in the sense of where I'll then go and uh, just reach out and talk to people in in a room. And of course, in the, in the online space as well. Oh, I could talk to you for forever about this, this topic, because I just think it's, um, you know, women, we need each other, don't we, in terms of being able to have that connection so we don't feel lonely. Because actually, Cordelia, even COVID aside, I think business can be lonely if we don't, ha- we aren't surrounded by other people that are on the same journey with us, understand what, you know, Definitely. what we're doing Definitely. and the, the, the challenges that we can face along the way. You know, it can be a bit of a roller coaster at times, can't it? Definitely. And I just believe that if you don't have your tribe, there's another program I have that I share with women who have no social friendships. As the older we get, is the smaller our social group mm. becomes. And for me, being an expatriate for the last 28 years, I've realized that I don't have my family around the corner. So I've had to build relationships with people who truly are in my same time zone and, and, and help me do life here. So I have a, a program which I call my core circle program. And I believe you need five different women around you who can inspire you, who can elevate you, who can support you. They should live in the same time zone as you because you're all on the same page. And they've all got different jobs that they do for you. Um, hopefully I'll remember. It is my concept, <laughs> but as yeah. I said, life in, forget things. But yeah, yeah, you- good old menopause. <laughs> <laughs> your brain is fuzzy most of the time. But one of the girls is somebody who is your um, Google on legs. She's your information queen. 
she knows everything about everything. She knows what the best schools are for your children. Um, she knows where you can get, you know, a cheap bottle of wine. She's just your information girl. Mm-hmm. Then you've got a girl who basically is your um, mentor. She, she helps you raise the bar. She basically influences you in the right direction. The third girl is an opportunities girl. She's always looking out for you. She's always looking for job opportunities, work opportunities, projects, a new house if you're moving. And then you've got a shared interest girl. Um, she's the woman who basically you can go on holiday with, sit and read a book together and not even talk. And you just, you know, have the same interests. It's just so easy to go shopping with her the whole day. And then you've got a girl who really supports you. She's the one that hears all about the, the old man that drives you mad, the kids that are disrespectful and brattish, um, you know, your financial roller coasters and your hormonal imbalance. So if you have these five types of girls in your life, then you are really well equipped to do life. And then if you have another tribe of women to help you run your business, and that's in my program as well, then you're good to go, Louisa. You're sorted. And we need, we need that. When, when men you know, hear us talk, um, I think they're jealous of us because they won't admit they need it, but they need this as well. But women, oh my gosh, we, we, we can't survive without it. We yeah. won't be successful. Yeah, it, it, I often joke with my girlfriends that we need a commune, that we yeah. can all, you know, <laughs> a commune with a spa where we can all hang out. You know, women, women love community, don't they? And I think you're right. I think men really benefit from it as well. And I, and I feel it's uh, possibly a, a bigger challenge. What I'm excited to see though, is, is more male coaches out there in the online space creating those communities for for men and you know interesting to see how things are shifting and actually that'd be interesting to have this conversation with a male to see their perspective as well of how things are changing and what they what they need in in their worlds too oh I love it I love it is there any question that you wish I'd asked you before we wrap up (laughs) that I haven't asked you I just want to make sure we've, we've covered everything that you wanted to share okay well one of the questions I'd love to answer is why do people invest so much time, so much money, so much effort in social media when right in front of them, they have inherited skills, especially women, relationship skills that can do better than social media. So why why, why do we invest so much time mm. and energy on something that we're not even naturally born to do? And I think it's because we're all trying to live up with the Joneses. I think there needs to be some mavericks within us, within the sisterhood that say, I'm going back to the old fashioned way. I know that all of this is great for business. However, I can spend hours on this and I still don't get any shares. I still don't get any likes. Why don't I? just build relationships and just do it consistently because I know how to do that. I'm naturally good in that. I'll give you an example of why we're so naturally good at it. How many of us have given birth to children? And when those children came out of us, if the father wasn't beside us, he wouldn't have even recognized who the kid was. Actually, when the child got put into the nursery, Louisa, when the nurse came back, we would instantly know as mums. Mm. That kid is ours or that kid is not ours. So from the very beginning, we build relationships. We introduce that child to the father. We introduce a child to the sibling, to the grandma, to the aunties. So we are natural connectors. We are natural relationship builders. But we throw all of that natural talent away in search of posts and likes, which don't come because nobody even knows we exist because we haven't got that word of mouth strategy sorted. So in my mind, to be successful in business, stop, take a moment and build your tribe first. When you build your tribe, you can ask them, how much should I charge for this product? What should I call this product? Where should I position this product? What brand name should, do you know what I mean? Because your tribe will give you the feedback. Mm. They love coming on the journey with you, I think. That's, you know, in terms of I'm launching this new program, what do you think? Being able to feel like they've contributed to shaping it 
is yeah. yeah is it such a such a blessing oh yeah. I love it I love it everybody needs to come and hang out in your world Cordelia and I know you've got an amazing gift as well that you very generously said that you'd share with the listeners do tell us about your free gift so we were speaking about the whole mum's philosophy the whole myth of don't speak to strangers well I've written a, a three-part training series Each video is five minutes long. I really just get to the point. I cut to the chase and I share with you um, really easy steps on how you can connect to the right strangers so that you can overcome the fear of rejection so that you can gain more new clients and that you can have access to more opportunities. So that's my freebie, Louisa. I'm honored, grateful and feeling blessed that it will go into the sticky mitts of (laughs) your audience who you know if they want to find out more about how to do this then happy to help them along their way thank you so so much and how can people stay in touch with you okay so if you are a sisterpreneur i.e a woman who owns her own business and is ambitious and wants to collaborate to connect and to be a part of a community so collaborate, connect, and be a part of a community. All the seeds which match Cordelia, my C name, then do join us on um, in our Facebook group, which is called Sisterhood, and then the number four influence and the a- and sign, not and a n d, no, the and right. So I've got to say it again, Sisterhood for influence and impact. Yeah, that's my Facebook group. That's where I hang out. That's the main place to catch me. I told you I'm a 1960s kid. I will be on social, but not that often. Catch me in the group. That's where I build community. That's where I hang out. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. And we'll pop all the links below the the video and the audios, et cetera, um, on the the webpage. Oh, thank you so much, Cordelia. Thank you for your time, your generosity and all your wisdom shares today. Um, And I invite all our community members and audience to pop over to Cordelia's world, check her out. She's got so much more wisdom to share as well. And I know you'll love being in the Sisterhood for Influence and Impact community as well. Thank you so much for joining us till our next episode, sending you all lots and lots of love till then. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.